CDP stands for Chronic Inflammatory Demyelinating Polyneuropathy. It is closely related to Guillain-Barré syndrome, and it is considered the chronic counterpart of that acute disease. CIDP is the most common inflammatory immune-mediated neuropathy. It is caused by the immune system destroying the myelin sheath that covers peripheral nerves axon. CIDP can occur at any age and in both genders, but it is more common in young adults and in men more so than women. The condition is acquired and potentially treatable. The initiation of an early treatment to prevent loss of nerve axons is recommended. For CIDP patients, early diagnosis often means early treatment. This is essential because it can prevent lesions that are sometimes irreversible. It usually involves someone who is young or middle-aged and most often manifests with sensory disorders from the very beginning. I had a febrile episode that was associated with intense numbness in my hands and feet. This disease does not only manifest with strange or painful sensations in the limbs, but also with discomfort. It involves functional discomfort. You may have trouble walking, get tired when walking, have trouble running or have trouble using your hands for different activities, such as opening a jar of jam. In addition, a 37-year-old woman who cannot run is not normal. There was a conflict between my will to run and the fact that I could not. Something else I considered serious that I could not ignore was the inability to lift my legs. While driving, I had a hard time moving my foot from the brake to the accelerator. This lack of control was something I felt endangered me. In CIDP, you may have symptoms in your feet that are transient. For example, paraesthesia that comes and goes. Due to this fact, patients are not always immediately referred to a neurologist or to undergo an electromyogram. The first symptom that can alarm your doctor is an onset of exhaustion, fatigue, that is not supported by routine lab work. The second reason that your GP could send a patient to seek a neurologist is the absence of the patellar reflex. I think this examination should be part of the standard assessment. It is true that on physical examination there is a big difference between polyneuritis, diabetes and CIDP, which is the king of inflammatory neuropathies. When reflexes are checked, they are no longer present in the arms or legs. However, in polyneuritis, generally only the ankle reflexes have disappeared and all the other reflexes are present. This reveals that all the peripheral nerve fibers are damaged or entrapped. The third very serious symptom is difficulty with balance. This balance disorder is an important sign that reveals an important underlying organic condition, a non-transient sign. The first point to be determined is whether the disease is acquired. In undiagnosed forms that become chronic, skeletal deformations can also occur. Therefore, pes cavus, and that makes a disease that can be treated look like a genetic disease. Therefore, you must be very careful. When you are faced with deformed feet, for example, in a patient with no past family history of the disease, you must also think about ruling out the possibility of an inflammatory disease. In the end, what can make the difference when you're having trouble? Any changes in the electromyogram. When you're faced with CIDP, you will have something that is not good, namely values that are not good. Then you treat the patient and presto, you will see the values go up. And then you will see when it deteriorates. This fluctuation and improvement indicate acquired CIDP, while the other involves no changes in the electromyogram. And that is what should eventually be a red flag.